Hello everyone, so welcome to the fourth lecture of this module and today we are going to discuss one more method for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. So, in the last lecture we have discussed Jacobi method for finding eigenvalues for a symmetric matrix and there we have um, uh, we have used the similarity transformation in such a way the a similar matrix has uh, we uh, a similar matrix found corresponding to the given matrix and that similar matrix is just like uh, just a diagonal matrix where the eigen values are the diagonal elements. Like Jacobi method was restricted up to symmetric matrix only, today we are going to discuss a method which is applicable to any square matrix. However, again we are having some conditions to apply power method which is we are going to discuss today and we will discuss about those conditions. So, first of all let A be a square matrix of order n. The eigenvalues are calculated just by solving the characteristic equation which is given as lambda raised to power n plus some constant c n minus 1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 and so on. So, it is a n degree polynomial in lambda and roots uh, 0 of this polynomial will give you the eigenvalues. Let us say eigenvalues are lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n where some of them may be equal or repeated. We will say that lambda 1 is a dominant eigenvalue of a if this condition is satisfied means the absolute value of lambda 1 is greater than rest of the uh, absolute values of rest of the eigenvalues. That is mod of lambda 1 greater than mod of lambda i for i equals to 2, 3 up to n. And if this condition holds lambda 1 is the dominant eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector is called dominant eigenvector of A. So, for example, if I take this 2 by 2 matrix, so the characteristic polynomial of this matrix is lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 which is having 0 as lambda 1 equals to minus 1 and lambda 2 equals to minus 2. So, the eigenvalues are minus 1 and minus 2 for this matrix. Now, if we see that absolute value of minus 2 is greater than absolute value of minus 1, hence minus 2 is the dominant eigenvalue of this matrix and corresponding eigenvector is 3 1. Now, what are the conditions to apply power method? First of all, eigenvalues can be arranged in the following way that is the dominant eigenvalue should be there for the matrix. And there should not be any repetition of dominant eigenvalue. For example, if we are having a 3 by 3 matrix, there should be one dominant eigenvalue which is not equals to other. For example, if A is 3 by 3 and we are having eigenvalues minus 5, 3 and 2, then here minus 5 is clearly dominant eigenvalue. But if we are having eigenvalues like minus 5, 5 and 4. Here we cannot apply power method as such and we, we, we will not be able to find out the eigenvalue because here the dominant eigenvalue is minus 5 as well as 5 and it is repeated. So, here lambda 1 is not clear, strictly greater than the rest of the eigenvalues in terms of absolute value. The second condition is which is again very important that the matrix A should have n linearly independent eigenvectors. It means A should be similar to a diagonal matrix if we talk in terms of similarity transformation. So, with these two conditions let us drive the power method. So, let A is n by n matrix and it is having eigenvalues lambda 1 which is strictly greater than in terms of absolute value to rest of the eigenvalues. values. 
Moreover, we are having eigen vector as v 1 corresponding to lambda 1, v 2 corresponding to lambda 2 and v n corresponding to lambda n. And here we are assuming that v 1, v 2, v n are linearly independent. So, if these vectors are linearly independent then any vector v from the vector space R n can be written as the linear combination of these Eigen vectors. So, if v belongs to R n or if matrix is from the field of uh, from the complex number then from the C n. So, if v is from R n then we can write v equals to C 1 V 1 plus C 2 V 2 plus C n V n. Here C 1 C 2 C n are scalars. Now, if I multiply by matrix A in this equation I will get in the left hand side A into V and then C 1 A into V 1 plus C 2 a into v 2 plus c n a into v n. As we know that v 1 is an Eigen vector corresponding to Eigen value lambda 1 for the matrix A. So, I can write c 1 lambda 1 v 1. Similarly, this term I can write lambda 2 v 2 plus c n lambda n v n or if I take lambda 1 common from the right hand side I can write C 1 V 1 plus C 2 into lambda 2 upon lambda 1 into V 2 So, this is equals to A V. If I multiply one more time by the matrix A, in this equation I will get A square V in the left hand side and this will become So, C 1 V 1 plus C 2 and the square of lambda 2 upon lambda 1 into V 2 plus C n square of this ratio term into V n. Or if I continue by multiplying A again A again, let us say I multiply k time it will become A raised to power k V equals to lambda 1 raised to power k into C 1 V 1 plus C 2 lambda 2 upon lambda 1 raised to power k and finally, the last term will become now look at this equation. Here we are having in the this term lambda 2 upon lambda 1. Similarly, in the next term we will be having lambda 3 upon lambda 1 and so on. Here our assumption is that lambda 1 is the dominant Eigen value. It means that this particular term lambda 2 upon lambda 1 will be less than 1. Similarly, lambda 3 upon lambda 1 will be less than 1. And up to lambda n upon lambda 1 which is again less than 1. So, when k is tending to infinity my a k v will become lambda 1 raised to power k into c 1 v 1. It means I can find out lambda 1 edge limit k tending to infinity by 
by this ratio. And here r is the component of the vector this part, these particular vectors having the highest value in magnitude. So, this will give me dominant Eigen value and since we are using various powers of a that is why we are saying it the power method and from this equation it is clear that if lambda 1 is the Eigen value that is the dominant Eigen value then the corresponding Eigen vector will be V 1. So, with this I can talk about the convergence of this power method. So, if lambda 2 upon lambda 1 and absolute of this ratio term is less than 1, the rate of convergence is fast. Moreover, whatever will be the means if it is quite small than 1, the method will converge faster. If it is close to 1, this ratio term, the method will converge slowly. As we know that power method is an iterative method because each time we are making, we are starting with the initial solution V0, then we are finding V1 as A of V1, then I, uh, V2 will be A of v, uh, V2, uh, V3 will be A of V2 and so on until unless it will not converge. So, there should be some stopping criteria and the stopping condition is if in the two successive iterations lambda is less than a given threshold ok in terms of 10 raised to power minus 3 or minus 5 whatever accuracy you want in your method or the maximum component in two successive vectors v k plus 1 and v k and difference of this which is having the maximum value is less than a given threshold. Moreover, to control the round of error, the vector is normalized before pre multiplying by a, so that the largest element remains unity. For example, if you start with 1 1 1 and after multiplying with a, you are getting let us say some vector 2 3 4. So, what I will do? I will normalize it in such a way that the biggest component of this V 2 vector that is 4 should become 1. So, that vector will become 2 by 4, 3 by 4 and 1. If we talk about Eigen vector, so we start with V 0 as the initial vector and the condition is that this V 0 should not be orthogonal to vector V 1. So, and it should be a non-zero vector obviously, because we are finally converging this particular vector is converging to the Eigen vector. So, y k plus 1 equals to a of v k, then I will find out v k plus 1 as y k plus 1 upon m k plus 1. And as I told you where m k plus 1 is the largest element in y k plus 1 in magnitude. So, in this case lambda 1 will be limit k tending to infinity y k plus 1 r upon v k r. Finally, v k plus 1 will be the required Eigen vector corresponding to lambda 1. Let us take an example of this method. Just consider this 3 by 3 matrix and let the initial column vector be 1 1 1. So, first of all I will find out v 1, v 1 will be a into v 0, a is this 3 by 3 matrix, v 0 is 1 1 1 this column vector. After multiplying I am getting a another column vector which is v 1, 2, minus 1 and 0. Now, what I will do first of all, I will find out from v 1 to y 1 and y 1 will be, I, I will see which is the uh, biggest component in this vector in terms of absolute value and here it is 2. So, I will divide this v 1 by 2. So, y 1 will become 1 by 2, 1, 0 0.5, 0. So, here I can say that in this iteration my Eigen value is 2 and the Eigen vector is 1 minus 0 0.50. Then I will calculate V 2, V 2 will be A into Y 1 and A into Y 1 when I will calculate it, it will become 3.5 minus 4.5. Again I will divide this vector by 4, so that this term will become 1 minus 0 0.8751 and minus 0 0.125. So, here in this iteration 
eigen value the approximation of eigen value is minus 4. So, just look in first iteration it was 2 in the second iteration it is coming minus 4 and similarly we are getting a deviation in eigen vector. In the third iteration eigen value becomes 6.125 that is the approximation and y 3 becomes minus 0 0.9181 and minus 0 0.1837. So, we are not getting any sign of convergence so far in 3 iterations. However, if we go up to 14 iterations what we find found that the eigen uh, approximate of eigen value which I am getting in 14th iteration minus which I am getting in 13th iteration that absolute difference between these two is less than 10 raise to power minus 4 and hence the power method converts to eigen value 5.4773 which is the dominant eigen value of the given matrix and the corresponding eigen vector becomes minus 0 0.403711 and minus 0.2233. There are some dis uh, advantages or limitations of this method. The first one is if the initial column vector v0 is an eigen vector of a other than the dominant eigen vector, then the method will fail since the iteration will converge to wrong eigen value. Moreover, the speed of convergence depends on the ratio magnitude of dominant eigen value lambda 1 upon magnitude of the next largest eigen value. If the ratio is small, the method will converge slowly. The power method only gives one dominant eigen value at a time. Okay. I will tell you how can we find out other eigen values using this method. So, as I told you there are some limitations. When I told you the assumption for applying this method, I told you that there should be a dominant eigen value. If this is not the case, what will happen? whether the method will converge or not. Let us see it with an example. So, if I take a 2 by 2 matrix let us say 1 1 0 minus 1. Let us find out the Eigen value of this method, Eigen value of this matrix using power method. So, let me start with a initial vector V 0 which is 1 1. So, V 1 will become 1 1 0 minus 1 that is my matrix A into V naught 1 1. So, 1 plus 1 2 and minus 1. Now, I will calculate 2 v 2 will become a of v 1. So, it is 1 1 0 minus 1 into 2 minus 1. So, 2 minus 1 will become 1 and it become 1 1 again. Then if I will calculate v 3, v 3 will come 2 minus 1 v 4 will come 1 1 and so on. So, my method will stuck here in these two vectors in either I will get for the odd iterations of v I will get 2 minus 1 for the even iterations like 2 4 6 I will get 1 1 and I will uh, it will never converge. Why it is happening? This is clear from here. If you see the Eigen value of this matrix, it is an upper triangular matrix and here Eigen values are 1 and minus 1. And the region of this oscillation is very simple that the matrix is not having the dominant Eigen value. That is why the condition that the matrix should have dominant Eigen value is quite important for applying the power method.
up to now we have seen that using the power method we can calculate up only dominant eigen values and corresponding eigen vector. Suppose I want to calculate other eigen values also. So, we can modify this power method in such a way that we shift the dominant eigen value to 0 in a new matrix such that the second to dominant eigen value become the dominant. For example, if you are having eigen values lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, if lambda 1 is dominant, what we will do? We will shift this lambda 1 to 0 in some other matrix such that the lambda 2 becomes the dominant and then in this new matrix we will apply the power method. So, this method is called method of deflation and it is based on deflation theorem. So, how it works? So, once you calculate the dominant eigen pair that is lambda 1 v 1 of a matrix say you will calculate the or you want to calculate lambda 2. Here so I will take an example of symmetric matrix, but it can be generalized for any other matrix also. So, if A is a symmetric matrix then it can be proved that if u 1 is v 1 upon mod of v 1 then a 1 is a minus lambda 1 u 1 u 1 transpose has eigen values 0 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda n and the eigen vector of a 1 will be the same as of a. So, this is one of the result of deflation theorem. So, here we are saying that if A is n cross n matrix having eigen value lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n and corresponding eigen vectors are v 1, v 2, v n. Now, and also we are assuming that lambda 1 is the dominant eigen value. and the corresponding eigen vector to this v 1 that is the dominant eigen vector is v 1. Now, I am saying if A is a symmetric matrix I can calculate a new matrix A 1 or let us say it B which is A minus lambda into u into u transpose where u is the unit vector in the direction of v 1 then this matrix b will be having the eigen values 0 lambda 2 lambda 3 up to lambda n and the eigen vectors will remain same like v 2 v 3 v n for this new matrix B. So, what we can do? Suppose using the power method on this matrix A, we calculate the dominant eigen value and corresponding eigen vector that is lambda 1 and v 1. And here this is my lambda 1 is the dominant eigen value in this result. So, so, I calculate these two what I will do? I will apply this transformation I will get a new matrix B and again I will apply the power method on B. So, that I can calculate the next eigen value to the dominant that is lambda 2 and corresponding eigen vector that is the dominant eigen value of B will be the next to dominant eigen value of A and how we are getting this result? Suppose I a is a symmetric matrix, so I want a new matrix B which is something A minus lambda V into x transpose. So, I am taking a vector x, if I multiply this vector x in this second term of the right hand side of this equation I get a new matrix B which is having the one of the eigenvalue as 0. 
if lambda is the eigen value of a. Now, how if v 1 is the eigen vector corresponding to lambda of a. So, I will be having b of v 1 equals to a of v 1 minus lambda v 1 x transpose v 1. And as I told you lambda 1 and v 1 are the dominant pair of matrix A. So, A v 1 can be written as lambda 1 v 1 and then it will become lambda 1 v 1 minus lambda 1 v 1 x transpose v 1. So, it will become 1 minus x transpose v 1. Now, how to choose this vector x such that one of the eigenvalue of b should be 0 and the corresponding eigenvector should be v 1. So, here if this term become 0 then what I can have if this term is 0 and I choose a x in such a way then b v 1 will become lambda 1 v 1 into 0 that is b v 1 equals to 0 means one of eigen value corresponding uh, for which this is the eigen vector should be 0. So, for a symmetric matrix I can take this x as this one. So, that my this becomes u and lambda 1 u u transpose this becomes the deflation transformation. Let us check this with one of the example again I am taking a 2 by 2 matrix and find now my question is find I all the eigenvalues of this matrix using power method together with method of deflation. So, it is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, there will be only 2 eigenvalues. One of the eigenvalues that is the dominant eigenvalue we can calculate using the power method and the other one we will use the method of deflation in power method. So, let us start with 1 1. So, using the power method and after going up to 10 iteration what I am getting that eigenvalues eigenvalue that is the dominant eigenvalue is converging to 9 and the corresponding eigenvector is converging to minus half 1. So, hence one of the eigenvalue of this matrix the bigger one in terms of absolute value is 9 and the corresponding eigenvector is minus 0.51. Now, I apply this transformation deflation. So, a will become a minus a b will become or a 1 I have written here a 1 will become a minus lambda 1 u u transpose. So, after applying this my a 1 is coming 4 upon 5 into 4 to 2 1. Now, again I will apply and from the method deflation theorem one of the eigenvalue of this matrix will be 0 and the corresponding eigenvector will be v 1 that is minus 0 0.5 and 1 which is corresponding to 9 for a. So, by applying the power method again on this new matrix a 1 starting with 1 1 we get x 2 as this one 1 upon 4.8 into 1 upon 1 by 2 and after going this way we will see that the method is converging to 4 as the eigenvalue dominant eigenvalue of a 1 and corresponding eigenvector as 1 and 0.5. So, hence this lambda 2 equals to 4 is the dominant eigenvalue of a 1, but it is the other eigenvalue that is the second eigenvalue of a and the corresponding eigenvector is 1 with and 0.5 as the two components. So, hence using method of deflation with power method we can calcula calculate all the eigenvalues of a given matrix. So, in this lecture 
we learn how to use power method for finding the dominant eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector of a given matrix. Later on we have seen method of depletion, if we apply together with power method we can calculate other eigenvalues also those are not dominant of the given matrix. Thank you very much.